His name is the branch. In that day shall the branch of Jehovah be beautiful and glorious. Everywhere, in every language, even in the Islamic zodiac, everywhere, this sign is referred to as virginal, the virgin. All of the, there's many more stars in, in this constellation, um, but I want to give you the... So the next one of her deacons, the small constellation now that's going to make up the story of Virgo, is Coma. There arises in the first deacon, the small constellation, as the Persians, Chaldeans, and Egyptians, and the two Hermes. So these are all people who have studied the, st the ancient people who studied the stars. That's all their names. And they teach a young, that beside Virgo is a young woman whose Persian name denotes a pure virgin, sitting on a throne nourishing an infant boy, having a Hebrew name by some nations called, I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's the same as Jesus, uh, the, two different, the two different Greek and um, Islamic names, in which in Greek is called Christos. So if you were in the Greek one, that would be the name. So the picture starts with a virgin, a woman, a woman who's standing there with a branch in one hand and a fully developed, mature, either wheat or corn. But both of those, the, what do you call an individual little piece of corn if you take it off the cob? And what do you call an individual little piece of wheat if you take it out? Okay, so that's why it doesn't matter. Whichever picture that is, what's the, what's the significance? They're both a... C C yes. Mm -hmm. And so, or the kernel. And so what did Jesus say about that? Unless a kernel falls into the ground and dies, it will not bring forth in this very first picture, the branch with all of the scriptures, prophetic scriptures for the branch coming. We already know the kernel is going to be the important part of this branch. The kernel, the branch is going to be the Jesus. kernel. And now we move to the first deacon, and we see the next part of this. There's going to be a child, but it's a male child. It's very evident in the names of the stars there that it is a male child. Every language, every place, every culture, the name of this constellation signifies virgin. So there is a virgin with a child. And the child is a male child. And the name has, the name of that child has been forever the name that as you come down through cultures and languages eventually translates into Christos or Yeshua. Same one. I hear the voice. Yeah. Just one of the ways that it's been perverted is that in the world, Virgo is the sixth symbol. Is the what? The sixth symbol, meaning they can't translate properly because they're starting 
in the wrong uh, I get it. Yes, I get it. Absolutely. Okay, I didn't get what you were saying, but they're saying, what she's saying is one of the ways this whole thing has been perverted is that the world's zodiac starts at a different place. Instead of starting with Virgo, Virgo is the sixth in line. So, of course, the story's perverted. If you don't start with the virgin, and that's why that Sphinx was so important, such an important discovery to have found that. Good, good point. So here we have the woman with the branch, prophesying the branch, with the kernel. The branch is going to be the kernel. It is going to be a virgin woman with a child, nourishing that child. I'm going to skip this. We'll come back to it next week. I want to do this. So here is the name and the constellations with, that come with this. It is called the woman with child, many places. It is known as the desire of all nations. The ancient Egyptian name for this is Sesnu, the desired son. That's the... big star right there, the desired son, Sheshnu. The seed of a woman. There is a woman with a branch. She has a seed. That seed is going to become the kernel, but that seed is going to become a child born of a virgin. There's a woman with a seed. Women don't have seed. The branch, the prophesied branch, is going to come from a woman with a seed. You're looking at me really strange. It's just like, <laughs> I want to go home now. <laughs> Okay. Huh? I'm pretty saturated. Okay. All right. So we're going to do this one and we're done. And we'll come back and review this next week and put it into. Uh, so this deacon, the virgin, prophesied the branch, who is going to be the seed of a woman. We now see the seed of the woman, who is also going to be the kernel that's going to die. We see the seed of the woman, born of a virgin, being nourished. And let me just, I'm going to do this and we're not going to talk about it. Just so you can see the three. This is called a centaur. The seed of the woman, a, man, a boy, a boy, a male child, and the next deacon shows a centaur, which is half man, half horse. This boy now is a man, but it's a man with two natures. A God nature, a human nature. He has a spear. What you can't see on here is he's spearing a beast called the victim. He is also the victim. So he is, no man takes my life, but I lay it down. He is inflicting the mortal wound on himself. And then the third one that we see in this. So I'm just giving you a quickie here. So you go home and say, at least I saw one. We'll talk about him. Is Botes. Botes is the coming one. He's coming with a spear in one hand and a sickle in the other. What's the sickle represent? The harvest. So what you're seeing in this very first sign is the whole picture of the gospel. A woman who is going to produce the prophesied branch coming out of a seed of the woman, out of a virgin, a young child born, being nourished, but then he grows up and he's a man with two natures. He possesses the sword that allows him to take his own life lay down his life but he's coming back because now he is here as the one with the sword who has the sword of the spirit and out of his mouth comes the sword i can give you every scripture 
and he comes with the sickle to bring in the harvest. Okay. Awesome. All right. So we don't have all that foundation to lay next week. So can we only look at the stars, look at the names of the stars, uh, just absolutely see the awesomeness of God who did that on day four before there was ever a man. Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you that by your power, you and by your might, you expand our capacity to understand these things that are so far removed from, from our capacity to, to understand your awesomeness. We worship you with it. We worship you with this message that you knew who we were before you ever made a man. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs>